Oh, you had me at hello. I'll tell you what, music helps us out a lot. I, uh, I love to sing. I love to sing. I, I sing in weddings, believe it or not. Um, why don't y'all shut your mouth? I had a friend call me not too long ago. He said, dude, I'm getting married. I want you to sing at my wedding. I'm like, okay, I'd be honored. When are you getting married? He goes, in two weeks. I'm like, well, thanks for the heads up. I said, uh, well, what do you, when do you want? He goes, well, my friend I wanted to sing, he fell through, so I called you. <laughs> well, flattered, thank you. I said, okay, when do you want me to sing to the wedding? He goes, well, when the bride's walking down the aisle, I want you to sing then. <laughs> you sure about that? Oh. <laughs> I said, okay, uh, well, what do you want me to sing? He goes, you pick. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was thinking. Half of me's going, no way. The other half of me's like, I can make this a wedding no one's ever going to forget. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of songs wouldn't go well. <laughs> be very appropriate at a wedding. We're walking down that. <laughs> What's love got to do? Got to do? <laughs> that wouldn't be very appropriate. <laughs> Heard it from a friend who Heard it from a friend who Heard it from another you've been messing around That wouldn't be good at all. <laughs> She's my best friend's girl <laughs> But she used to be mine That wouldn't be good. <laughs> Might lose a friend over that one. Oh, there's worse. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> you can't always get what you want, but you can try sometimes. You might find you get what you need. Yeah. Who gives this woman? Cut. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to cut that. That's not going to be on the show. <laughs> Thank y'all for coming out, man. It's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. I love coming down to uh, this area. I had uh, some time to hang out, and I, had this, I ate at this wonderful restaurant up there in Frisco, uh, Ikea. Yeah, it's delicious. Had to build my own table, though. That took a little time. You guys been to Ikea? You know, okay, we get it, you're Swedish. You're a Swedish company. Every, it's like everything has to have its own little Swedish name. Like it's not a table, it's a Mugenflugen. I'll take the Mugenflugen and four stool and bagulins, please. You think they'll fit in my farfic noogan? <laughs> it's here in the parking lot and <laughs> What is this restaurant Chipotle? What's up with that? No. What are we just giving up on the human sized portions of our burritos now? <laughs> like yeah, take a laundry bag, fill it with meat. That's what I want. Yeah. I don't I don't want a tortilla, I want a duvet cover, huh? You want this to go? Okay. I'll get the dolly. Okay. So somewhere around here, you have a Taco Bell Express. You freaks need a punchline for that one? What is your pro... <laughs> You're in too big a hurry for regular Taco Bell? 15 seconds is too long to wait for your tacos? How fast do you want acid reflux? That's what I want to know. How are you going to make Taco Bell faster? I'm going to shoot them out of a cannon as I drive by? <laughs> Taco Bell Express. I'd like to order. I'd take a number two now! <laughs> Come on, Julio. I want some diarrhea. Let's go. Chop, chop. <laughs> Let's skip the middleman. Let's go. Let's do this. I love going down south to eat, man. Down south, they have some good restaurants like this Cracker Barrel. Yeah. 
Oh, down south, man, they're like, oh, we're going to take you to the barrel, Timbo. <laughs> we're going to treat you right at the barrel. <laughs> Y'all have Cracker Barrel here. It's not that great, is it? No, it's not. It's like you're eating at a garage sale, for crying out loud. There's stuff hanging all over the walls. Rusty farm equipment over your head. Hey, can we get a table not directly under the horse castrator? It's a thin thread right there. I need some more golf tees for this triangular game. I'm trying. All six left. I'm an ignoramus. The Cracker Barrel. They got om They don't have omelets at the Cracker Barrel. It's supposed to be this breakfast place. I'm like, y'all ain't got no omelet. No, we ain't got no omelet. That was my waitress. We ain't got no omelet. She wasn't even chewing gum. I don't know what. Hi. Like you ain't got omelets now. What you see is what you get. We all got some eggs. Yeah, we got eggs. You got some peppers and sausage and mushrooms. Yeah. Think you can think outside the box for a little bit, Aaron? Sure, we can work something out here, Kitty. Draw you a schematic if I have to. All right. I love Southern waitresses at the Cracker Barrel, man. It's like I'm just trying to order food. I don't know what she's talking about. You know? I'm like, how are the biscuits and gravy? Oh, they make you want to slap your mama. then I don't think I'm going to get the biscuits and gravy. <laughs> Being my mama's here and all, that would be kind of awkward. <laughs> How are the pancakes? All oh, they make you want to hit your daddy with a baseball bat. <laughs> Do you have a less violent menu I could take a look at? I don't want to hurt anybody. I just want some food. <laughs> That's what she said verbatim. All oh, they make you want to slap your mama. Are the biscuits that good? You're like... Mm. <laughs> Mama, you might want to go out in the car for a while. Yeah, a couple more bites, I'm going to have to throw down. You know what I'm talking about? These are delicious. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Love fine. I was in Mobile, Alabama not too long ago. I was at the airport, and I was just wa waiting for my plane to come in, looking out the window. This guy didn't even know. Walks right up to me. He's like, man, those planes sure do come in low, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it's called a landing, Bubba. That's what that is. It's Really, no other way to do that. It's like we're coming in for our perpendicular descent. Here we are. <laughs> okay. Get off if you're still alive. I fly a lot, man. I think people think I'm a rock star all the time. Like, dude, you're a rock star, man? <laughs> you're like a rock star. You can fly around. <laughs> like, no, Dad. I'm not a rock star. That's weird, man. Well, I'm no rock star, believe me. Rock stars don't have to rent cars, I do. <laughs> rock stars get picked up by a limo, man. You're never gonna see Mick Jagger lost in a Hertz parking lot, all okay? right? <laughs> Where's me Ford Focus, huh? <laughs> I think I pulled a muscle when I did that. Puts <laughs> me full focus, hey? Yeah, I am no rock star, man. I gotta stay in motels. Motels, not hotels. Motels. You know there's a big difference in the... Mm. <laughs> Y'all stayed at motels, haven't you? It's like people walking by every five minutes looking in your window because those curtains never come close enough together. You're like a monkey at the zoo. The...
I saw him at the Cracker Barrel. He was <laughs> um, no, I gotta, I'm, a, I'm not a rock star. Rock, rock stars don't iron their own clothes. I gotta iron my own clothes, believe it or not. I know, rock stars, I, I, I hate iron. Don't you hate ironing your clothes? The only cool thing about ironing your clothes is that sound it makes when you lift up the iron. <laughs> you are... Yeah, you let the steam build up. I always wondered if Darth Vader ever ironed his clothes. A sh oh, sh oh, sh oh. Luke, your shirt is ready. Luke, I'm your mother! <laughs> hate ironing clothes. I bought an iron a couple years ago. There was a warning on the back that said, do not iron your clothes while wearing. <laughs> Never been in that big a hurry. I ain't got time. Give me that thing. Shh! Get in the car, kids. Daddy's ready. <laughs> Bring me some ointment. <laughs> the worst motel I stayed in was a year ago. Uh, I stayed in a motel. I looked. There was a microwave oven on top of the toilet. <laughs> I'm going to let that sink in for a bit. Did you hear what I just said? Microwave on top of the toilet. What kind of feng shui are you throwing down here, motel man? I didn't go in there to eat, okay? What, are you gonna make a Pop-Tart then, Pop-A-Tart? What are you gonna do in that situation? What's the next logical step? Like, boom! Oh, it's... I need a napkin. Yeah, I love driving around. I get lost all the time in the car, man, but I hate asking people for directions. You know, I asked this old dude for directions one time. I didn't know what he was talking about. Like, sir, how far is it to that golf course? Oh, it's about 20 miles as the crow flies. <laughs> well, thanks, Sitting Bull. I appreciate your help. <laughs> one planning on taking the crow today. How about as the man drives? You got those coordinates, Slappy? <laughs> they just built this new skateboard park by my house. And I don't know if you people have a skateboard park by your house, but if you do, you need to use it. That's for the adults. That's not for kids. That's for you, the adults. That's the most soothing experience ever. Let's go to the skate park and watch kids wipe out hour after hour. <laughs> That's God's provision right there. That's amazing. I, oh. 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 oh! Try it again without the helmet. I think it's, oh. He's gonna do it! Oh. I skateboarded in the 70s, man. Skateboards were a lot smaller, man. It's like a tongue depressor with wheels. You remember those things? My son was like, Dad, you used to skateboard? Oh. Did you do any sick tricks? I'm like, yeah, make it to the bottom of the hill without dying. <laughs> did you do an ollie? No, I did a folly. <laughs> she get hurt, man. See, kids don't get hurt as much, man. They got elbow pads and helmets and lawyers. <laughs> when I was a kid, we, you, you, anybody here ever get the wind knocked out of you when you were a kid? Isn't that the worst experience a human could have? You crash on your bike or your skateboard, get the wind knocked out of you. It sounds like a sick whale for 30 seconds. And your friends would talk to you. What happened? Oh, no, 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 Did you get the wind knocked out of you? Oh, yeah. Pretty much. 
you must be a doctor. You're good. You want some water? No, air, you idiot. Air. Oh, man, I know this Christmas my daughter's going to want a puppy. Oh, I can't stand animals. I don't like animals. I just don't. If I was Noah, it'd just be me and you right here, right now. You wouldn't be reading about no ark. It'd be a pontoon boat and a couple of jet skis. But my daughter, I know she's last year, she wanted a dachshund puppy. Daddy, I want a dachshund puppy. I want a dachshund puppy. Hey, we ain't having no docks and puppy in this house. We're having a fight for an hour. We're going at it. I want a docks and puppy! No, no. I want a docks and puppy! Like, honey, I read, docks and puppies are terrible with children. She goes, you're terrible with children. <laughs> that may be true, honey, but daddy don't pee on the carpet. <laughs> Just that one time, and that's... <laughs> that's before I knew Jesus, so that don't count at all. Here's the deal. I think anybody with kids, I don't care how many kids you have, I think you just need help. You know? Like that lady over there right now. You need help. I think if you got kids, you do. You just need help. I don't need health care from the government. I want a nanny. I want the super nanny. You ever seen the super nanny? Anybody seen that show? It's the best show ever. The super nanny is where this English nanny comes over and helps these demonic possessed children from America and they're just like ah! Ah! and she never loses her cool she's like no Thomas no we don't do that Thomas no what do you mean you just knocked your mother out cold with a pot that's not what we do we don't do that I'm very disappointed Thomas I'm going to have to get harsh you heard me harsh I hate to do this to you, but go sit on the naughty mat. <laughs> you heard me, the naughty mat. And I'm sitting at home going, there's got to be more than that. I mean, is that where he sits where you find something to beat him with? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Because I don't know how you were raised. I was raised a little bit different than that. My mom would tell me what she's going to do to me. I'm going to beat the snot out of you. You hear me? I'm going to beat the snot out of you. I'm going to hit your head so hard, snot flies out of the front of your skull. It's going to be awesome. When she was really mad, she beat the living snot out of you. I'm going to beat the living snot out of you. Your snot's gonna have a respiratory system when I beat it out of your head. It's alive! She was right! Oh, she was detailed. I'm gonna spin your head off like a lid on a pickle jar. I'm gonna take my leather belt with my name on it. I'm gonna beat you and brand you at the same time. I'm like, Mom, you're the worst mommy in the world. No, I took second last year. I'm going for first this year. I won't have it. I won't have it. I won't have it. That was her phrase. I won't have it. I won't have it. What, what are you not going to have? It. She'd spank, man. One time she spanked me for something I didn't even do. You think she apologized? She's like, that's for something you'll do later. <laughs> Are you saying I have a spank account? <laughs> think you're bouncing checks, you weirdo. But I don't know, I think I do a lot of the same things my parents do, but there's one thing that my wife and I do not do the same. We've decided a while back we are not going to spank our children anymore. We're just not going to spank them. I don't judge me if you want to. No more spanks. We're going to use a taser. 
Yeah. Boy, that technology is from heaven above right there. That's provision right there, parents. You need to hear me out on that. You need to embrace that technology. That's it's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet, doesn't leave a mark. They don't remember. It's awesome. <laughs> Smart stuff. Whatever, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know. He must eat peanuts. He's having an allergic reaction. <laughs> Throw out the weeds. Throw out the weeds. <laughs> I know it's not legal. It's just it just works. That's all I'm saying, folks. I know we got kids here today. Kids, I know it's frustrating. It's frustrating as parents. I know it's frustrating as kids because you get in fights with your parents, you know, your mom especially. And see, the thing is, is moms have comebacks in fights that don't make sense. <laughs> but they don't care. <laughs> you ever get in a fight with your mom? Mom, don't mom me! <laughs> How dare you mom me like that? The momming stops now, smart aleck. <laughs> Go to your room. You're sitting in your room, your brother's like, what happened? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I mommed mom. What does that mean? <laughs> Stoner, she keeps saying I won't have it. What does that mean? It's like a code. <laughs> your mom ever say this? Clean up this room. I am not going to say it again. <laughs> cool. But she's not gonna say it again. She's finally gonna shut her mouth about the whole thing. Hey, Ma, you gonna email me or something? I wish I could invent a bed that would make itself. Wouldn't that be great? Mom's coming in. This bed is not gonna make itself. Look again. That's satanic. I don't like that. That's not good. I won't have it. I won't have it. Won't have it. Here's the deal. I think they should let me be the super nanny. Oh, you might want to tune in. Because <laughs> there will be some violence going down on that show. <laughs> the super nanny will be a whole different experience for the viewer. Like, no, Thomas, no. Come on, let's go. I'm going to drive you off a naughty cliff. Come on. No, you don't need your shoes. You're not coming back. Come on. <laughs> Say goodbye to your brother and sister. Let's go meet Jesus. Come on, let's go meet Jesus. <laughs> no pots in heaven. Let's meet him. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm just getting sick of it. That's one thing. I don't know. It's like... All I ever do in my life, in my house, is uh, look for my kids' shoes. <laughs> They're never together. Is that true here where you live? The kids' shoes are never together. That's all I do is look for, and I'm sick of it. I don't care anymore. I'm just like getting in the car. I don't care what's on your feet. I really don't care. <laughs> I don't put a Ziploc storage bag on your feet. I don't give, <laughs> I don't care if the shoes don't match. I don't care if they're wearing a, wearing a rain boot and a flip-flop. I don't care. <laughs> See, I think Walmart has it right when they sell their shoes. They have that plastic string that holds them together. Maybe we're not supposed to cut that. Let's stop doing it. Daddy, wait up! Come on! I want to go to Cracker Barrel, too! So I love Payless Shoes story. You guys ever go to Payless Shoes? How do they make money? My goodness, buy one pair, get 10 pairs free. <laughs> buy two pairs, get a franchise. That place is awesome. It's like the ramen noodles of shoes. <laughs> I think Payless Shoes are made out of ramen noodles. I really believe that. Next time you lose one, just boil the other one and eat it. That's what you need to do. 
But if there's one message out there, I don't know, I, I think it's for the fathers out there. Uh, if you guys, any of you guys are married the, and your wife stays home with the kids all day, when you get home from work, she needs a break. You know, she just needs to go somewhere. Yeah, that's, there's, yeah, that's the truth. Now, I've been married 15 years. I learned that the hard way. Came in from a three-day trip. I walk in the door, and my wife's just standing there waiting for me. Honey, I'm home. Yeah, I heard you pulling up. <laughs> Can I have a hug? <laughs> What's the problem? You need to take the kids somewhere. <laughs> and you need to do it now. <laughs> okay. Where, where do you want me to take them? I don't give a rip where you take them. Just get out of here. Okay, we're gonna leave. Let's get in the car. She said, get in the car! We're gonna go. We'll be back at June. <laughs> so I get my kids in the car, man, and we're just sitting there. I didn't know where to go. We're just, okay. I took him to Home Depot. I didn't know what to do. I don't know. That's where guys find peace, at the Home Depot. Just look at hammers for a while, you know? That was not the right choice that particular day. <laughs> Folks, you, got, you can't let your kids run off at the Home Depot. Because I don't know, you have not lived your life till you turn the corner at a Home Depot and see your youngest son using a display toilet. Just getting real here. There's a Kodak moment for you right there. Any of you parents got an answer for that little quandary? On huh, James Dobson, why don't you focus on my family for a while? Mr. Smarty Pants. And he's going to town, he don't care, the manager's looking right at me. I'm like, hey. Yeah, that's my boy. <laughs> Should be done in a minute here. Y'all take Visa. Okay, good. That's good. Just what Daddy wanted, a turquoise toilet. And why don't you just throw a microwave on top of that bad boy? We'll call it even. Make it a package deal. But I have, uh, best thing I ever did was uh, I got married to my wife, Heather, about 15 years ago. And uh, she's just, she's unbelievable. She's a great woman. She's a strong woman because I am an idiot, and she just knows how to get back at me. She's smart. One way she gets back at me, she takes me to stores I have, you know, men are never supposed to go to. And you can tell the store that men are not, you know, really supposed to go to by the name usually, like Bed Bath & Beyond. <laughs> they should rename that store for men, call it, ah! You know a lot of stores are women's stores just by the name. And there's one not too far from here. I think it's called Kay's Closet. Kay, you know that's a woman's store. You know? There's a store called Jim's Closet. I ain't going into Jim's Closet. <laughs> or coming out of Jim's Closet, for that matter. That's just the way I roll. But when she was really mad, we used to, there's one around here, I think there's a place called uh, La Madeleine. It's a restaurant. It's like this French, <laughs> this French little cafeteria place. That is a woman's store, man. Because men, first off, it's La Madeleine. Men don't like La. There's no La Bowling Alley. La Bass Pro Shop. But it's weird. She takes me to La Madeleine. I, I, it's like by the time I get done ordering there, I turn into my wife. It's ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, give me the uh, chicken salad croissant sandwich and uh, some lobster bisque. Can I get that in a cup? Oh, I need to make a substitution. Um, can I get the fruit cup instead of the chip? Okay. Uh, apple Danish shouldn't, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I 
Do you have raspberry tea? With Splenda? Bonus! Let's go to the candle store. She gets back at me though, man, wow. She does. She has these questions she asks that men are never, you know, we can't answer. <coughs> Women have that knack, that, that talent of asking questions. It's just, I don't know what to do. <laughs> you guys ever get this question? Three weeks ago, you gave me a funny look in the car. Why? <laughs> I didn't know there was going to be a pop quiz, sugar babe. I... Now, what were you thinking when you gave me that look three weeks ago? What were you thinking? I don't know what I'm thinking right now, to be honest with you. Can I use a lifeline or phone a friend here? I don't know what to say to you, woman. He does. We're in line at Walmart one time in the tabloid section. She asked me this, if I weighed 1,500 pounds, would you still love me? It's a simple question. And why is it taking you this long to think about it? If I weighed 1,500 pounds, would you still love me? I'd visit. What? Give me a break, that's huge! Take you to SeaWorld, try to make some money off you, I don't know! Fifteen hundred pounds. <laughs> I love it when I, I see new couples, man. That new couples, they just get married and they have just have it figured out, you know? They have all the answers. They have this whole marriage thing, oh, it's so easy. They're always bragging about their relationship, you know? You hear them talking, it's so amazing, our marriage is so amazing. <laughs> What's so great about it? It's just so spiritual. It's like we're joined at the soul. The soul. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like we finish each other's sentences all the time. We finish each other's sentences. <laughs> I'm like, big deal. I don't care how long you've been married, you always finish each other's sentences. I've been married for 15 years. I'm like, hey, honey, can you make your own sandwich? <laughs> that is weird, because that's just what I was going to do. <laughs> I was going to see if you want me to make you one, too. <laughs>